Hey guys, what is up? It's Dusty here and welcome back to another crypto video. Today has already been a pretty crazy day for XRP. We saw $1 today, we saw 83 cents today and right now we are back at 90 cents. It's been a ride. It's definitely been a ride. My question of today is are you guys still holding or have you given up? Now, I personally said a couple of times over on Twitter um, and on YouTube as well that I do think one more leg can come. And I must admit, I did think that the correction from before, so this correction to about 65 cents or so was already good enough to spark the next run up. Kevin Cage put up this on Twitter. XRP crashed 66% in early 2017 bull run before going absolutely parabolic. XRP recently just crashed 68% this month. A guy can dream. And all I can say about that one is, yeah, a guy can indeed dream. And we are, uh, we are, <laughs> we are looking at this right now, just waiting for, for the leg up, basically. I mean, it's such an interesting situation. I personally think history doesn't necessarily repeat itself um, in the exact same fashion. Things never happen the same way twice, right? However, I do also believe that the that the pattern from before can replicate itself to some degree. And what I mean with that is that we might get some sort of same percentage gain following. Yet then again, all the factors are different. Right now, the main driving factor after XRP is the lawsuit. So, you know, honestly and logically speaking, if something positive or negative happens, well, that's also what we get, right? That's also what we get in, in the XRP price. So if, for example, a settlement were to come, you guys already know we're going to make a very big amount of money that specific day. Um, and I guess if there's any other news from Ripple side or SC side, it doesn't really matter. We just, we trade it or we, we react to it at least. So I would say longer term price or even uh, these higher parabolic spikes are not going to come just off of XRP on its own. Unless Bitcoin goes parabolic too, if we're talking on XRP raising, rising, whatever, on the XRP to BTC pair though, then it's going to be needed that XRP get something crazy going in this lawsuit or some outside factor which we haven't really thought about just quite yet. Then some people are calling this whole crash, which by the way is not just XRP, it's any crypto right here, um, calling it out that it's something to do with this. What to expect as $2.1 billion worth of Bitcoin's options expire tomorrow, or actually now today. A short-term Bitcoin bull run might be underway, with 55,000 Bitcoin options expiring Friday, leading to a $40,000 open position at a $130 million spot price. The market could be in, in for a short-term bull run. However, it's important to note that the possibility of this is not certain to take away from the ongoing market dilemma. Ironically, the market is entering a bull run in a bear market, although seeing as the bear market is considered a short-term trend, analysts are optimistic a macro bull market will be recorded in the long term. Bitcoin has been in a danger zone for most of the last week when prices dropped to a low of $30,681 on the 19th of May before taking in $7,000 in a short-term correction. At the time of this writing, the benchmark asset doesn't trade too close to that price mark, being one of the lowest daily gainers with nearly 3% in losses. Bitcoin is now valued at about 39000 Well, um, it's been an interesting ride. Let's put it like that. It's been really interesting the last couple of days here. Um, I, I guess I should hold my heart. <laughs> Just, you know, keep it in a, in a tight grip because this is not good, man. If, if you're not that certain about your position if you're not that certain about the journey here this is not good if you let your emotions anywhere close uh to to i guess crypto you're gonna have a hard time i mean personally it's so easy for me to hold because i have a longer term vision but if you don't or if you thought you know what i'm gonna make some quick money i can really understand that this is extremely extremely awful for you because uh whatever day all right huh bitcoin falls eight percent after certain market crash to be honest, there's nothing which you can really contribute to it, attribute to it. Uh, some people are also saying this. Bitcoin's price hit highs of $40,000 yesterday, shortly after President Biden announced that the U.S. will spend $6 trillion in the next year to save the economy from the effects of the, you know, its highest sustained U.S. government spending since WWII. Um... And again, people said that things did well for because of that, and then later on crashed because, well, people buy the rumor, sell the news, and nothing really was happening just quite yet. It's in the end, though, unclear exactly what caused it. Small hints came from BurgerSwap, the Binance Smart Chain-based decentralized exchange, which was last night hacked for $7.2 million, and Hohum critics against Bitcoin by Japan's central bank governor. 
I don't, I don't really know about that though. I mean, that doesn't really crash things too hard, right? I mean, who really cares about that type of stuff? One little hack, a couple million dollars, nobody really cares about that. And this last part is not really that popular. So, uh, XRP price prediction, Ripple consolidates as bulls remain subdued. XRP price is hovering below a critical supply zone, extending from $1.09 to $1.18. The inability of Ripple bulls has led to a sideway movement so far, and even a decisive close above $1.18 does not promise a swift upswing. Nah, I mean, this article is kind of stupid. <laughs> I guess it was relevant maybe at the start of today. XP is hovering below a critical supply zone, extending from one to... Okay, right now it's at 90 cents. I mean, who cares about $1.09? <laughs> <laughs> I find that interesting. Let's quickly see. At the time, it was at about 96 cents. Even then, still, I mean, it's hovering below that zone. Okay, let's quickly see. So one demand zone, which you're referring to, um, flipped to supply zone from 2018. Daily closing price from 2018 is $2.75. Okay, we are, okay, okay. Yeah, this, this is indeed an interesting area. You can see a little bit of, of, of action I guess two times, I guess three times already right now. So this is the most logical point to come back towards. Then again, this is so basic. What can you do with this? Nothing. Is there any real credibility to this? Um, debatable. You might think, oh yeah, Dusty, we're gonna go to that area because we now bounced and you blah, 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 blah. Well, you don't have to. I mean, we can just, We I guess we came back down here, right? Throughout the day to about 84 cents or so. What did we fall back down towards? Let's quickly check it out. We came back to about 84 cents or so. We came back right towards this line, and now we're coming back up. So maybe, I guess maybe $1, uh, $1.09, which he just referred to, is our, our first point of interest. Let's watch. All right, let's see. Maybe. Could be cool. And then SEC Chair Gary Gensler eyes crypto exchange regulation on grounds of better investor protection. This is going to be the main topic of today. Yesterday, the main topic was um, definitely SEC Ripple lawsuit stuff, because there was just so much of that going on. Today, the main topic is by far going to be talking about Gary Gensler, talking about what's going on, talking about what he said, talking about everything like that. Right now, of course, we're talking about the crash, which, again, nobody really knows what it is about. Some others are saying that this crash is still because of all the regulations that were going on before. Once more, guys, it is not confirmed. Nobody can confirm this. There's been so many different rumors. In the end, though, I think all these regulations or all these talks of regulations are kind of dumb because no regulation that any guy can come up with is actually that bad for crypto. It might be a short-term negative thing. It might hurt the prices for the short term. However, the harsher they are, the heavier it will rebound. That's something you should really keep in the back of your head. The harsher they are on it right now, the more people will notice, hey, yeah, this is exactly what crypto was built for. And as that momentum kind of goes along, it, it will revive itself, so to speak. So once more, guys, whatever regulations you see, it might be annoying, but it's never the end. It can't be. There's nothing which you can... If they cannot hold it anymore, things become different because if you're not allowed to hold it anymore, people will start to kind of revolt, riot, whatever you want to call it. If you are not allowed to hold any crypto at all in the US, right? I mean, in some countries like China... I'm not sure exactly what's going to happen over there. Our media will not report on it too much, so it's really hard to say. But if the U.S. or, or some country here were to say, you know what, you can't hold this currency anymore because we banned it, oh, that would be a that would be an interesting situation. That would be really, really, really interesting. I'm not sure how the people would react to it, but they wouldn't accept it. Uh, right now, there was a study just now which I read that that four out of ten, I think, um, you know, just maybe Europeans or U.S. just four out of ten of the people surveyed. We're actually invested in crypto. I'm not exactly sure if, if you you know do your population right there that that would actually come to the same conclusion. But let's say uh, maybe 10% of the world really, no, nah, not not world, right? Let's let's call it 10% of the 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 Western world here has gotten into crypto. If all of a sudden all those guys, it's like the same thing as saying you can't invest in stocks anymore. You can't invest in foreign exchange anymore. Uh, I don't know. I don't think people would really accept it. I think it would be a really big deal. And in the end, that regulation would not last, or it would come with so much backlash that they would have a lot of explaining to do, but they, they can't, right? They know themselves too. They cannot ban something of that de degree. All those billionaires are into it too. That would be a really, really harsh decision because what could you base it on? Why would you ban it? Because it's risky? Oh, it's their own risk, right? The, the, uh, no, no. And that's actually the only one that could be really annoying. If they, if they tax it heavily, it might be annoying, but people will find a new way, right? If they make the acquiring difficult or something like that, they'll find a way. Nothing can get it down forever. It's always temporary. 
Then Cardano begins countdown to smart contracts with Alonzo Teslin. Once more, guys, Cardano is actually one of the most exciting coins for the next couple of months. We've already talked about it now for the last, like, I guess one and a half day or so because of Charles's recent announcements. But make sure you understand Cardano is one to really, really watch for the next couple of days because they got some big upgrades coming. Um, I, I did a video yesterday as well explaining why Cardano is in some points better than Ethereum. Cardano is actually better in most points than Ethereum if they are done with their stuff. And that's actually where the backup comes in. Cardano right now is actually not complete. It's not actually done. It's not actually that operational. However, they have a shorter time span to get things done than Ethereum. And the thing is, if they get this done, they are in every way, shape or form better than Ethereum, except for the fact that Ethereum has more projects running and is older. So if you're talking about the short, short, short term, Ethereum obviously is better because they're further, right? They're far, they, they've already done more. If we're talking about a medium term, ADA is better because, well, they're, I guess, more developed and just better technology. If we're talking a long term, it, it's going to depend on it because ADA has better technology, but Ethereum has so much more and has the first to do something advantage that it's going to be hard to see if they will all switch over. And Ethereum is also going to go to a proof of stake. Ethereum might catch up to some of ADA's newer technology as time moves on as well. It's going to be an interesting one. Let us see, let us see, let us see. But the next couple of weeks will be really, really interesting for ADA.